All right, welcome back. Bat on to perfect competition and profit maximization. All right, so how are we going to maximize our profit? Well, what we want to maximize is the total revenue minus the total cost. How are we going to go about figuring out how much should we produce in order to do that? Well, what's the best way? Before there was economics, we didn't really know, we just guessed. And what we did was when we produced as much as we could produce and we didn't worry about what the total cost was. We just produced as much as we could produce, sold it all, and if we made more money, woohoo, we celebrated. And if we didn't, we got out of the business. Well, now that we've had economics, we actually do things a little bit differently. All right? What we do is we do an analysis called marginal analysis. And it's relatively simple, as it turns out, at least in this perfect competition case, because what marginal, marginal analysis says is that maximize profit when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue, how much money do we make additionally for each unit that we sell versus how much money does it cost to produce that extra unit? makes sense, right? I mean, think about it. As long as you're, you're selling more than you're spending, you're making profit, right? This is the defining characteristic that determines where you profit maximize. And this is true for any market, folks. It's just the easiest to analyze in a perfect competition. But for us, marginal revenue is what equals marginal cost is the profit maximization point. I will probably ask that question in three or four different forms under lots of different market at, you know, markets that we're analyzing, but in the end, this is true for all of them, okay? So let's go ahead and do a quick analysis of marginal analysis when it comes to dealing with a perfect competition. Well, for our corn firm, right, this is my corn, my corn farm, just my corn farm as an individual. Since I'm in a perfect competition, I'm a price taker. That means here is the price. And this is also my demand curve. Now, the other thing about it is, is that if I sell my goods at the same price no matter what, what's my marginal revenue? If I sell a good, if I sell one good for $2, my marginal revenue, I sold, I, I, my total revenue is $2. If I sell an additional unit, if they're $2 each, right, I made two dollars for one. I make two dollars if I sell if I sell two. Right. So, so my marginal revenue is exactly equal to the price because each step, each each additional unit I produce makes me exactly whatever the price was. So my total revenue is going to increment by one price unit every time I produce an additional unit. Right. So if I make three at two dollars, my total revenue is six dollars. If I go to a fourth one, add one unit, what does my revenue become? $8. Marginal revenue, the difference between those two, two. If I produce five at $2, marginal revenue, $2. So one of the key things that makes our life easy, really, is that the price and the demand and the marginal revenue are all the exact same curve. That's why perfect competitions make our lives easy and why we use them as an initial analysis for this. Now, the question is, where do we figure out what marginal cost is? Some of you probably are already thinking, wait, chapter 6. I remember those cost graphs that Marshall was drawing. They look something like this, right? He would put this, this curve, he'd call it average variable cost. Here was my average total cost. And then he would do something like this. Whoop. There was my marginal cost, right? How much it costs to produce one of those additional units. It always went up higher than the average total costs. All right? Where do we maximize profit? Where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Where those graphs intersect. This is how much we should produce. That will maximize our profit. Or in this case, it'll actually minimize our loss. Why are we at a loss right here? Because here's how much we're going to produce, this is how much we're going to sell it for, this 
This is the average cost for producing each one of those units. If our price is below the average cost, we're not making money, folks. Should we shut down? Well, that's a question mark. We're not 100% certain. Maybe we should, but at least notice what's happening here, right? This is the cost of the variable units, right? So we're at least making enough money such that every produ unit we produce, we sell for more than what it costs to produce it. The problem is our fixed costs are shooting us in the foot, right? We're not covering our fixed costs, so we're not making extra payments on our, on our loan that we got. We're not maybe paying all of our rent, right? Or maybe we're paying rent and we're you know, having to borrow money to cover our, our loan costs, right? Our interest is, is a little bit too high. So what we would do in this particular case in the perfect competition is we'd do an analysis. We would decide, can we continue to survive with this loss? Or should we sell the business and get out and get out while the getting is relatively good? Right? It's, it's hard to analyze this because what are, you, what, what are you hoping happens? That potentially the price will go up in the near future and that you will get to that stage where you are getting close to an economic profit. All right. So this is a quick, dirty analysis of how to go about maximizing profit. What I want to do is to take a look at the long-run implications of a perfect competition. We'll do that in the next video.